So now you know what to include in the brochure, we need to get started with formatting. Step one is we're going to adjust the page orientation. So we're going to go ahead and go to File, New. We're going to get a blank page opened up. We're going to go to Page Layout, Orientation, and go to Landscape. That will make your page wider than it is tall. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out so I can see the full document. And we've got that correct. Next thing we're going to do is adjust our margins to a half an inch. We're going to go to Margins and just choose Narrow Margins. Next up I would like for you guys to choose a design theme and a new color scheme. You're not going to really be able to see much of how it's affecting your brochure in the beginning so you can always revisit this one later but start by picking something. So I chose a theme I'm going to go ahead and go over here and choose a color scheme and I can always adjust this later. And I'll start by choosing a background color for my brochure. And again, I can change this later. Next thing I'd like to do is to put my brochure into three columns. If your ruler is not showing, you want to go to View, Ruler, and make sure you check that off. So that way you can see if you have columns. Currently I have one big column in the dark gray are my margins. So I'm going to go to Page Layout, Columns, and choose three. I now have three columns, one, two, and three. Next up is text alignment. You want to justify your text but not the headings. So well, since I don't have any text yet, I'm going to skip that step and come back to it. And we're going to add in our main title and style it as a title. I am doing converting text to a table. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the Home tab, Styles Group. Click the drop down arrow and look for my title style. You can then choose to center it or left align or right align it, whatever you like. Next, I want you to add in your main headings and style them as headings. So you might look up here to see what we're including to figure out what your main headings would be. So one of the first thing it wants you to do is explain the purpose of the tool. So you might write purpose and again you can put any heading that you want that you think fits and make that a heading one head back to our instructions it also says to provide specific examples so maybe I want a heading called examples I'm gonna make that a heading one It also said to list the technical steps for using this tool. So I'm going to write technical steps. Go ahead and do a heading one there. We're going to provide screenshots. So I don't know if you want to do a heading for that or just put those along each step. I'd also want you to provide tips for the user. I'm not going to make a heading for that because I think I might do a pull quote for that and use smart art somewhere in your brochure in a hyperlink. So, so far these are the only headings that I've got. I've done my page orientation and here's a tip. You can always use the strike through so that way you know which steps you've accomplished. We've chosen the design theme. We've set the columns. We've not yet done the text alignment but we have done the titles and the headings. At this point you want to begin adding content to your brochure. Write everything in your own words. You can rephrase things, um, maybe do the research and then close the resource out and just write it from your memory because this is going to be our writing assignment. One of the writing standards that we try to accomplish in this computer class is that you all can write technical language so you can explain a technical process. So that's what we're going to be doing here. So let's go get back to our brochure and let's start adding that content. We're going to start by introducing the purpose of this tool. All right, so I've went out and I've done a little research and I've watched a few videos and I found some information about my Microsoft Word skill, converting text to a table. So I've gone back to my brochure and I started typing up my information here. Now don't worry, I can always go back and proofread it and make changes later. So 
just get down any information that you have and we can always make changes. One of the first things I want to do here is my text is still kind of jagged on the side. So I want to go up to the Home tab, Paragraph Group, and Justify that. Now look how nice and straight that is. Another feature that I'd like for you to do is I noticed that one of my main headings is now at the bottom of Column 1 and I want it to stay at the top of column two at all times. So what I'm going to do is insert a column break by going to page layout, breaks, and choosing column. And this will jump that heading to the top. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my show hide button under the home tab to show you all what that looks like. It will give you a dotted line that says column break so that you know where that column is. It's always helpful when working in brochures to turn your show hide off and on so that you can see what's happening if you can't get things positioned properly. Another requirement was that you all added screenshot examples. So in my paragraph I was discussing how some people had text already typed out but they wanted to make it more visually appealing by putting it into a table. So I showed a screenshot of the plain text first and then I showed a screenshot after someone had converted it to a table. Now we're ready to move on to the next step. So I've added some of the content to my brochure, so I'm going to leave that open still. Now it says to add a drop cap where you think it would look best. So I'm going to go back and try maybe this first word and see if this looks good. Insert, text group, dropped. And you can change the drop cap options. So if you want it to drop maybe just two lines so it's not such a large drop cap, you can do that. You can even format the drop cap to look different. So decide how you'd like for that to look. If you ever make a mistake or something happens that you didn't want to, Control Z is undo. So now we've got our drop cap finished. We're going to insert SmartArt somewhere that we think it looks best. I'm going to go ahead and get my smart art inserted and I can do something with it later. And I'm thinking I would like to have my smart art in the third column. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my show hide so I can see what I'm doing. Go to page layout, breaks, and I'm going to insert a column break to jump me over to the third line. And I'm going to insert a smart art. I'm going to choose this smart art for right now. You can always change the color choices here. And you can change what it looks like here. So I've got my smart art and I can add content to it later. Insert a text box and I want one of the quote text box. So I'm going to go back over here. Go to Insert, Text Box. Any of the ones that say Quote will be acceptable. And you can resize this manually. I'm going to go in and change the font size to something smaller and move the quote. over here for right now. You can always readjust it later but at least I know I've got it on my page when I'm ready to use it. And one thing that I'd like to add is a tip. You're required to add tips in here somewhere so I think this would be a good place to put my tip. I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste it in and here are your different options. If I paste it like this it shows up with a white background and black text and that doesn't look good. If I choose the middle option it shows up looking like it should and just to be safe sometimes I choose text only to make sure I didn't get any formatting that I didn't want. So I'm going to keep my tip here, bold that. Next up, I'm going to cross that off, is column breaks. I've showed you all how to add your column breaks 
When adding those, it's very helpful to keep your show hide on or else you won't realize where you've inserted them. All right, at this point, we're going to get into our list. You need a multi-level bulleted list with custom bullets where you're going to do the technical steps for your process with screenshot examples. So here I have the section for technical steps. And right here is the multi-level bulleted list option. Once you start to type in your steps, just use the numbered bulleted button list or you can do a custom bullet over here by clicking the bullet button and defining new bullet. I'm going to do the numbered bullet here. Um, I do want it to be a multi-level bulleted list and here's how you can do that manually. It says a dialog box will now pop up. That's one of my steps. So to give further instructions I'm going to hit enter and I don't want it to be step six so I'm going to hit tab or shift tab takes you back or you can hit this button right here called the increase indent. At this point I can change what kind of bullet I have maybe to a regular bullet and this is where I could do that custom bullet point where I could say that I want it to be a picture and I could search for maybe a picture that applies to my subject matter. Right now I'm going to leave that here. Hit enter to get back to my list. I'm going to hit shift tab. At this point you're going to want to take screenshots of each of the steps. So my first step is to take a snippet of the text or to select the text rather. So I'm going to take a snippet of that. You can do that by clicking your start button, typing in snip to get your snipping tool, and then you can snip different parts of the picture. Well, since that didn't capture the selection, what I'm going to do instead is just hit print screen on my keyboard. I'm then going to click below, paste that in. I'm going to double click the picture and crop out the part of the picture that I don't need because I only need the selected text and you can always click this compress button which will delete any cropped areas of the picture so you don't have to worry about having a large file size. I'm going to copy it, head back to my original brochure and I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to hit tab and I've noticed that it's tabbing these over pretty far so I'm going to move it back. I'm going to paste in my picture and now I have that step right along with that. The next one is go to the insert tab. So I'm going to just grab my snipping tool and select the insert tab. Copy it. Paste it and then I just need to click tab and it's too far over so I'm going to grab the bottom it's like a rectangle and drag it over until it lines up with the other one. I want to click the table drop down arrow so I'm going to go to insert get the table drop down arrow and I, it's going to be hard to take a snip of this so I'm going to print screen it. I'm going to go to a blank document so I don't mess up what I've been working on so far. Paste in my screenshot double click, crop, and crop the portion of the picture that I need. Oop. I'm going to click tab. It's gone too far over so I'm going to grab the indent, drag it back to the left, paste in my new picture. It looks a little small so I'm going to increase that size. Next one says click the convert text to table button. So I'm going to go back to insert. Actually, yeah, insert table.
and I'm going to hit print screen. I'm going to head back to a blank document so I don't mess up my original document. Double click, crop, and grab the section of the picture that I need. back to here, hit enter, hit tab, it's gone too far over. I'm going to grab the indent, drag it back, make sure your ruler is showing. If it's not, go to view ruler. The picture is too small, so I'm going to increase the size. Now it says a dialog box will pop up, change the settings as needed. So I'm going to go back and get a picture of that. And I'm going to hold, hit Alt print screen and that will give me a picture of just the dialog box that I've got. And these are too far over so I'm going to grab the indent and move them back. Paste in my picture. Now all my technical steps fit in column two. I'm going to go ahead and save what I've got. Now you're going to add some graphics onto your brochure. We're going to change the text wrapping and change the positioning of these graphics. They need to be relevant and apply to your topic and I'd like for you to add some effects to them. At the bottom of column two, I'm going to go ahead and add in a page break, or a column break, rather. Page layout, breaks, column. That's going to get me to the top over here, and I'm going to add another heading, and I want this one to be a heading one. Now, you'll notice that it's been tabbed over, so I want to make sure that I've got it left aligned. And since it didn't go back, I'm just going to manually move it back myself to the left. And I'm going to insert some text here in my own words that are some helpful tips. So I just added in another tip, and I found a picture to accompany this. So I'm going to paste it in, and I'd like for this picture to go up here. One thing I'm going to do is add an effect to it. Another thing that I'm going to do is change the text wrapping. You've got different options through, top and bottom, tight, square, in front of text, in line with text. This particular picture is a longer picture, so I think I'm going to leave the text wrapping in line with text. Another option for text wrapping is to click this button and you can hover over each option to see how to change the text wrapping. Also, to do fancy positioning, you can go to the positioning button, choose one of these options, or more layout options. And it's going to give you some options here. We can adjust the size, the text wrapping, we can position if we've changed the text wrapping, we can position sometimes relative to the columns, to the margins, and so that's a nice feature. One of your requirements is to change the text wrapping to through. So I'm going to hover over these, that's square, tight, through. So now I've chosen through. I'm going to move it to where I think it looks best. Maybe right there. Another requirement is to change the positioning. So I'm going to click See More at the bottom of this. And I'm going to say change the positioning to the right relative to the column. You could also have chosen the margins, the page. I'm going to leave it on the column. Let's go back to the instructions. So I've just done the text wrapping, the positioning, we've added picture effects, we can go ahead and cross those off. Now you need to include a hyperlink with a helpful video or resource. 
and then you're going to want to add a hyperlink that takes them to more information. So I said for more information, click here. I'm going to copy the URL in the address bar, head back to my brochure, select the text. You can then go to insert, hyperlink, right click and paste in your URL, and then hit OK. After that, you want to finish off by including um, your contact information, so something like in the brochure with created by contact for more information. And you can choose to format that however you see fit. If you want to make it stand out, maybe insert some kind of special text box. All right, and here is the finished product. Again, you're going to want to check over it and look for any mistakes. I might add a little effect to some of my pictures to make them look a little nicer. You can always adjust those effects as well. So this one's got a shadow. These I have rough edges. I've got my multi-level list. So be sure you go through the rubric here and check off yes or no for each of these items to make sure you've done everything. And if you get stumped, as always, come back to this video and you can rewind or pause as many times as you'd like.